by the way, Sebastian Gilly, says I. I know you yeah, guys play together. Of course, I asked him how it was because I already knew your music, so I was interested in how you guys work together. And he told me that, uh, and this is something I kind of assumed already, but he told me that you kind of learned the songs without sheet music mostly. Yeah, and I do that. I, I suppose <coughs> that's your natural way of, of learning this music or learning music in general. And I was wondering yeah. how this evolved for you over the years and, and uh, what your relationship to written music is. Yeah, for me it was really, my whole life was hard to to read in rehearsals and read on stage. I could never really focus enough because I learned how to read pretty soon in my life actually and I was supposed to be good at it but I don't know what happened. I, <laughs> I, I can learn, I can learn it you know if you if you have a gig and you have a bunch of charts and you don't have audio at all if you send it to me I'll learn it you know yeah but but I don't know there's something about in my brain the way it's wired like the way I play and the way I feel the next note and the way I hear the band and the way I react the way I re memorize the notes and the way I feel comfortable you know yeah. Uh, uh, inter interpreting uh, melody, for instance, I like to read charts. If it's too much chords, I prefer reading than forgetting the chords. Sometimes, if it's too much, and then I don't mind because it's easier to read chords. So, but melody, either I learn it or or not. I can kind of create a relationship with like the the sheet, like how it looks in general, like the. Like if I learn it first, I can kind of really create a relationship with visual relationship with the cheat sheet, but not I'm not actually reading note by note. It's just like structures that remind me of what it is. Yeah. But I'm not definitely not reading note by note. And I I, I always practice ear training, not even knowing that I was doing it. just playing by records, right. playing through records and trying to make it sound as proper as as good as I could. In relation to the the record I'm playing to, yeah. And what were some of your your, your go-to records that you played with a lot? The nowadays or my oh, whole just life? Just in general, yeah, yeah. The ones in that, general, yeah. Uh, so the biggest one was always the Beatles, right, over there. Because I that was you know my first passion in music. Like I was three, four when I started listening to Beatles and playing yeah. to the records and. I wasn't even like trying to learn the songs. I was just like with the guitar playing to it and eventually I learned them and and then I started doing that with other bands as 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 my my tastes were were growing and my curiosity was like so that was cool because I was like if I could learn the Beatles songs which are simple in in terms of of you know music complexity technical complexity if you want I was when I started listening to harder music like jazz and stuff I was like if I can learn Beatles stuff by listening I can learn the jazz stuff too so I yeah. started practicing learning chords which is not so easy when you like have a, 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 a jazz recording with a bunch of heavy chords that you can't easily tell but then you listen to it 50 times to know what it is it's a good practice you know I think that's the that's the best way of like growing into it, when you're like in that stage of, of expanding your, your but you're always in that state of, of expanding everything but when I was a teenager that was a, a good good thing to do you know learning solos learning chords learning whole songs doing arrangements for guitar to play the, the whole thing, that kind of thing. Was there somebody who told you the the general parameters of the music? Like, this is minor, to, this is major, or whatever, or did you figure that out for yourself? I think I first, the, 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 the most basic rules, I, I figured out for myself because they were all there, you know, Beatles. Beatles is the, the easiest way to learn uh, harmony, like yeah. usual harmony, you know, it's like, it's everything in there and and their music has so much of what's universal in music you know the ways 
you know the the way the harmony goes and the melodies if you get that you already have bases for a lot of stuff a lot of stuff yeah and and i figured it out for myself at first but i had my dad is musician too so he would see me doing it and he would come and and share some of his knowledge knowledge which is really big but he never like you know wanted to teach me like okay i'm gonna teach you this now he saw that i was interested and he was just like oh you know what he'll give me tips and i did a band with my cousins and we were so into music so we were figuring out stuff by ourselves and sharing among ourselves and debating and you know creating together that was also a big part of me understanding music with a group of people that it's fun and and stimulating and and eventually I went to to a music school in Brasilia, which is kind of a conservatory, but not really. But I but I did uh, I I studied uh, classical piano a little bit and and other like theory stuff. So I I learned from that too, you know. But mostly from like being a musician, and having friends, and playing with people, because I stayed I stayed in school for like two or three years. And I wasn't really like a good student, but but it definitely helped. You know, definitely taught me a lot. Mm. Yeah, and and it was also where I, I I I met some of crucial, some of my most crucial friends in music that showed me a lot of new music. You know, took me to gigs. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when you learn, I always f feel that when you learn songs by heart, I mean through listening by heart. They're kind of sinking deeper than than you when you learn when I learn then uh, through reading. I sometimes yeah. have trouble uh, memorizing stuff that I uh, initially learned by reading them. You know. Yeah, for me too. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, for, it seems like for most of your life you've been learning songs by ear. So I'm wondering yeah. how how deep they are ingrained with you. You know, the the songs that you have learned. The longest time yeah. ago, you know. Yeah, like it's a love thing. Like when you learn a song that you love, you don't forget it. Yeah. You know, if it's too hard, sometimes you end up forgetting because your brain have a hard time remembering the right voicing. And if it's too much information, I can forget sometimes. But I'll even so I'll I'll, I'll find a way to 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 put it out because I really think that when you learn something that you love you don't forget you know yeah. and i have like a big uh repertoire of of songs that i know like that you know yeah easy songs hard songs and stuff <clears throat> and and the songs that i learned in the past reading i forgot yeah a long time ago yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i can really relate to that <laughs> <laughs> but also, I, I just made an album with a Brazilian git, git, guitarist Nelson Veras. I don't know if you if you know him. Oh, Nelson Veras, yeah. he's my idol. <laughs> so yes, big time. He learns. I think he learns the same way. He says he's a horrible reader, although he can actually read. Uh, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so I sent him the music, and he actually incorporated mistakes that I made on the demo for him. And now they're yeah. they're part of the song. So it, I Did really love song. that. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, this kind of um, gives way to a very personal approach of learning a song, you know, and it, it just yeah. doesn't become, he doesn't just learn my song, he, he kind of interprets it, you know, in his own way. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool, man. Nelson Vett is one of my favorite guitars of all times, man. Yeah, I saw too. him playing, yeah, I saw him playing live the other, uh, not the other day, Couple of months yeah, ago, he told me that you it? came by in Paris somewhere, right? Yeah, yeah, in Paris, man. He plays his ass off. He's such a special guy, man. Hmm. That's so cool. I want to hear that record that you guys did. Uh, I'll send it to you. I'll send it to you. Yeah, please do. Um, maybe you can um, tell me um, because I feel like your your playing has a very very singing quality to it, and yeah. I think that goes together with you actually singing in your music as well but I'm, I'm wondering how those two elements inform your your approach to music 
what two elements the, the singing, singing and, and the, the playing. playing because I think they work very well <coughs> together I think it's the is 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 the same thing like singing for me it's it's a it's a proof that what you're playing is deep inside in your heart and sometimes you can't sing everything that you're hearing but just the attempt of singing it's already a I always do, I have always done that even before I started singing my records I would sing while I was soloing and I would always sing what I loved you know if I'm listening to a solo that I love there's this one part that every time that the part comes I sing it yeah because it resonates you know yeah and this is kind of the effect that I want that that I want that I want people to feel when I'm playing you know mm. when I play this thing that they understand in such a deep way that they could easily sing it because it's it, it resonates in them on them and I always prefer the musicians that sing in a way not sing with their voice but with the instrument whatever it is yeah even if it's a drummer or you know it has every every instrument has a singing quality which uh, which is like the most immediate way of music coming out of your body singing I, uh, for me I guess and sometimes you're listening to someone that is really good playing chord progressions but you can't sing a chord progression but you can feel that the melodies within the chords are singing you know yeah. singing is just a sign of harmony harmonious right yeah. like it's just a sign that things are fluid and resonating yeah resonating so that's what I seek in music try to sing in everything I do you know mm. yeah I really feel that you have a very natural gift of writing melodies mm. there's a the, you know I've, I've first, first time I listened to that record Fox I, I was like he has a real gift for finding melodies and melodies That's so that cool. they, thank you they, they don't seem like somebody who's who's trying to write a clever melody it they just come natural mm. you know they they come yeah they're inevitable in a way um yeah and that's cool uh, man without without minimizing what i just said they're simple in a way you know yeah. simple as in yeah. singable uh you know mm -hmm. which is why it yeah. comes to mind right now when we talk about the singing quality or the singing nature you know? yeah yeah yeah, a melody for me is one of the things that I interested that that get my interest in the most in music. Like, I just love beautiful melodies, and the more you get experienced, the more the simpler you get, and the more you get experienced, the more your sensitivity gets tuned to what's natural instead of instead of you know overthinking the right. process and and I really like natural melodies and some melodies are, are already there you just have to like get it I think it's for <laughs> me for my taste I think it's so much be more beautiful when you listen to a, a song that has a melody that comes from the heart than listening to a song that has a melody that came from the brain this is really obvious to say but if you actually think of of what in of, of what that means is exactly what you said like most uh people that are into music and songwriting especially uh pop because this this whole movement of of people that came from backgrounds like jazz prog rock uh you know more intricate nerdy if you want not nerdy but you know all kinds of other genres genres like jazz and and jazz fusion and even uh you know brazilian music uh the instrumental brazilian music like Hermeto, Egberto, people that come from that background they get back or they end up wanting to write pop songs but Pop just just like trying to focus in the in the most the bare 
essence of of the word pop, which is popular, huh. which means for everyone, which is not a specific group of people, which I like that concept a lot because I also I always hung up with people that are not musicians and they're they are most of the time they're more they're wiser because mm-hmm. <laughs> just because people that's too much into music they get a little crazy i know i'm i'm saying like big statements and you know no i know but, i know what you mean yeah you know what i mean and i want to i want to i want I want to do music for people, you know. I don't want to do music for musicians, and and I know that a lot of people think that way. So they come this way, coming from jazz and coming from other genres of music. There are more specific audiences, and and they try to write. They go like, okay, since I'm writing a pop song now, I gotta write something clever. I gotta write something that I was never heard before. I gotta write. I I shouldn't write something. You know, so they try to come up with a melody that, with the lyrics that, you know, it's in a pop format, but actually doesn't resonate in anyone because it's just an attempt to write something, you know, super clever, or super weird, or super that, or super that. I never really liked that approach. You know, I, mm. I understand and I respect it has some kind of value. It's an art form anyway, so you know, it's just my judgment. Right. Who cares about my judgment? But. <laughs> This is what I this is what I feel, you know. This, it's easy for me to to hear melody and and feel it if it if it comes from a natural place and in a place that breathes, rather than like you know, a dude in a in a room try to like you know a group notes in a way that nobody done before and attempt to find its own identity and stuff. I don't know. Right. Yeah. I think the natural is always the what's natural is always the way to go. Yeah, that's what I think. But I mean, for a lot of people, um, it's not that easy to write a a simple or a, let's say not simple because that's in a way that's condescending. <laughs> uh, what I mean is more a strong melody, yeah. a strong melody. You know. Yeah. That's. Yeah. That's super hard in, in a way, you know, for a lot of people. Yeah. I understand, but at the same time, I think there's a way to get in touch with your true truth, and whatever comes out is what it is, and you just have to respect it. You know, if it came na- if it came out naturally, because writing a strong melody sometimes can mean writing the simplest m- melody you ever heard, or the weirdest melody you ever heard it doesn't matter i'm not i'm not saying that i don't like weird melodies i love weird melodies as, as long as they sound natural right yeah and i think that it's forced the, if it's forced yeah. or uh exactly there's some people that are naturally weird <laughs> and they write weird stuff and it's beautiful you yeah. know that's that's the coolest thing <clears throat> but whatever it is if you force it, it's weird and, and yeah it's true and yeah that's what i think Huh. So, my my favorite song on the record is K Seven Dreams. Yeah, and I wonder um, how how that journey started with that song. That song has a specific story, which is cool. Which is me and Kurt, we are mixing Kaipi. Yeah, the, hit, uh, the record that he uh, I'm in, and I helped him produce and. Uh, at at some point, Paul, which is the uh, mixing engineer, our good friend, Paul Stacy, was mixing. We were at his studio and he left, probably to get some chicken curry or something. And then we started talking about, I don't know what we were talking about, but he start, he played a tune that he recorded with Mark Turner, a tune of his that I have never heard before. And I was like, holy shit, man, what's that? What's, you know, when you listen to something and then you go like, your brain cannot understand, but you can feel it. You, know? yeah. you can feel that you understand, but your brain doesn't, your brain wants desperately to like figure it out, but it can't. So I was like, what's that? And he's like, I'll show you. Then he came, he, we went to the piano and he, he showed me this cool thing, man, that I showed to everyone. Uh, 
He's like, no, this is just that. And then he played this uh, major seven progression. It's just a whole tone progression, like major seven. I'll show you one yeah. sec. So he basically played that. You know, like F major, G major, A major, you know? Yeah. But the thing was like to hide the bass and the voices so it's not so it's not going up. Oh yeah. yeah. Which is pretty simple. But when you hide the you make it more mysterious and then you your heart can can still tell where it's going. Yeah. But you get the direction. Can't. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I, I, you know, I, I was, I kept thinking of that all the time, and this Can is you exactly case. Yeah, the 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 riff, oh, it's exactly that go. F. Yeah. Uh, this is just F. beautiful, man. But you can tell because the bass ch changes a lot, the, the the chords change a lot, right? And then the verse is just like, you know, the uh, a relief, from yeah, <laughs> from that. But yeah, like Kurt, as everyone knows, it's a one of my biggest influences <clears throat> of all times, and and he says and he teaches me so much, and he always talks about this thing. Like sometimes he just put a drop of knowledge into a you know into water and then you let it take its own natural way and he's the master of all of that he always he he, he always managed to make his music so interesting in a music point of view in a in a you know technical point of view mm. but deep 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 rooted into heart and soul and popular you know everything mm. they he's a genius in a sense of like making everything some sounding popular even if it's the most you know complicated complex piece of music which i think is a quality of, of the, the biggest genius you, know? mm. you, you you studied with him right i, I mean i when I met, when I got to hear his music, I started learning everything and yeah. being obsessed with him. So I studied with him in that way. And when, when we met, we were just like hanging out together. And I, he wanted me to be in his project. I wanted he, him to be in my project, which, you know, Kaipi and Vox was reflection of that will of us to, to keep, you know, doing stuff together. And all of these trips, all of these shows, the tours, the bunch of tours that we did together, working in albums together, becoming really good friends, close friends, all of that taught me so much. You know? mm. Way more than if I had, like, if I was his student. You know? Right. A guitar student or something like that. You know? like, you know? <clears throat> yeah, how was that process? I mean, it seems to me like Kaipi... You're all over that record. Yeah. You know, and when I first heard, heard that record, I was like, oh, there's a special voice. And, you know, then I looked in the credits and I saw, you know, you're on almost every track and you mm. co-produce yeah. it. And then I heard Vox yeah. and then it made even more sense to me. You know, yes. I didn't realize that yeah. when I heard Vox and there's not... I'm not putting down anything of Kurt's music or influence there, but when I heard Vox, I realized again or even more how much you're all over Kaipi. Yeah, 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 and and and, but actually, it's like a two-way thing since the beginning, even before we met, because Vox would never be Vox if he wasn't Kurt. Even even before we met, because some of the half of Vox was already written before we met, and all these songs are directly tied to Kurt because because I 
I got to know the some of Kaipi songs, some crucial songs in, in Kaipi a long time ago when they were still demos, you know. Right. And these are recordings that I kept like like a, a, a treasure, you know, mm. like like I would always listen and I was I would always like try to understand why these songs were so special to me because it wasn't like nothing else I had ever heard. And it was so before all of that stuff that I told you, like that that it's a natural movement yeah, yeah, yeah. that the, the the artists are doing now, like singing and and coming from other you know more specific styles. And it was so before that in my life, and 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 yeah, when I when I heard it, I was like, dude, this is what it's supposed to be for <laughs> me. This is what I this is. What what life, my life was gonna go, you know, where my where my life is going, you know? and I knew right away that this is what I wanted to do. It resonated more than anything around me, and you know, being in Brazil, you're surrounded by beautiful music all the time, you know. Mm -hmm. Also, of course, like bad music too. But you know, I grew up listening to like the all the dudes and. Kurt know all that stuff, and but one thing that Kurt had on, in his music that for me it was missing in my world was the rock attitude and the rock approach of things, which you know resonated so much with my with my Your love teenage for the years, my love for the Beatles, my love for rock, which is my first love in music, first passion. And I understood that then, you know, even not realizing exactly why, but I knew that the that marriage of Brazilian music with with jazz and pop, 80s music and whatever, with that rock yeah. feel, you know, with the immense beauty of of improvisation and, and knowing how to keep things spontaneous, but at the same time making it connected to a message as a whole inside the, the song. All of that, you know, it's hard to explain, but but yeah, mu Kurt's music is so special for me. It's like everything. It's like... Can you tell you me know? some, some moments how it was in the studio recording this music or also producing that, having having decisions, Shh. making decisions with him about the, the way the music yeah. will unfold? Well, I, I first I, I, I came up to him after, okay. So we met at the Montreux Jazz Festival, and then I won, and then after I won, there I we came back to Montreux to do this academy thing, which is like workshops, combo, whatever, and then a lot of things, cool things, and then <clears throat> uh, me and Kurt started hanging out together, and we liked each other a lot. Like just it was like a a birth of a nice friendship, and. I came to him was like, man, do you want to produce my record? I'm, I'm, I have this record which was also part of the prize, the Montreux thing, and everything felt so right and so connected. And he was on the spot. He was like, totally, let's do it. So I, I, after that day, I came to his hotel room while he was packing to leave, and he was like, play some of your music. Let me get to know. And then I started playing a lot of stuff, and I, eventually I started playing like. Uh, more obscure things that I would never play to anyone, stuff that I would only do for myself just as a fun thing that I like. I always like to record and produce songs. And some songs were just like, you know, um, rock songs. And he was so... Uh, he, I felt there was something different when I when I showed him that stuff. And then he was like, dude, that's so cool. Send me more of that stuff. So mm. I had a bunch of songs of like that and I sent it all to him. And these were the songs that he was like, you know, they ended up being Vox songs. For for instance, Nova Manera, which is the, the one side with just with the drums. Mm. That's one song that I show him that day. Another song called Sertão Profundo, which is a song that he plays a solo on it. And yeah. that's another song that I sent around that time. You know, these are songs that he was like, dude, that we, we got to record this one. And I was like, the, more on this vibe. And I was like, dude, okay. I'm down, but at the same time I was like hesitant because these were songs that I would, that I was kind of almost kind of shy about, you know. Why? And he took because 
I didn't have much friends then that I, that I felt that I could bring that kind of music and build something together because they were incomplete. I couldn't put it out by myself because they're totally they're missing pieces, you know, pieces of myself that could help me, you know, dig into myself and bring it out. I, I they all these songs they are heavily influenced by Daniel Sanchez, which is another good good friend of mine. Uh, but it was natural the way it was, and, and when I met Kurt, everything made sense, you know. And when we were in Switzerland at the studio, because it was also part of the prize, which is this Montreux Jazz Festival thing, was awesome, gave me a lot of stuff, man. Mm. I'm really grateful for that festival. And then we were in the studio, and the first night we had a meeting, me and him and, and the band, and Kurt was like, I think you should write lyrics for all these songs and sing it. And I was like, what? Dude, <laughs> this sounded like the weirdest idea ever, you know. Not weird. It felt natural, but at the same time felt so challenging and far away. And far away from my reality and and so and I was always so shy to sing. Always so shy to sing. <laughs> Even though I always liked to sing, but but he was he was like, Yeah, write lyrics and sing it. And I was like, "Wow, that's gonna be a trip, man. That's gonna it's gonna be hard, you know." But I accepted because Kurt, I had, and I still have all of his. Uh, he has all my trust, you know. Yeah. So I was like, "Yeah, man. Okay, I'll I'll I'll, I'll do it." So we kind of tracked like basic tracks, like bass, drum, piano for these songs, and then I came home and I started working on lyrics. I called friends to write lyrics for me, and. And then, and then after that, I would always like record a lot of stuff in my house, record new songs, and send to him. And he would always like be precise in the way he feel he felt about the songs, and honest, completely honest. And yeah. What were some of the notes that he sent you? Like, what kind well, of so notes would he say sent? Plus, well, sometimes it would be like specific things about the song. Oh, maybe try a sound like that. Maybe try another sound for this melody maybe this maybe that sometimes you'll be like uh, sometimes I'll feel that he doesn't like that song that much and I would like oh, okay so and then sometimes we talked a lot about solos how how we are gonna present the solos how we are gonna like make the solos fit into this Thing that's already so specific, and sometimes you put a solo, and you gotta have to make it, you know, go together. Right. And it was a lot of work. It was two years of like exchanging emails and working together. I went to Berlin. We worked together there. We went to London to mix their album together, and we made a lot of decisions there. It's a lot of like a. It's it's very much a, a symbiotic relationship, you know. Sometimes he didn't have to say much for me to understand what he meant but I really think that that he understands my my music and how was it vice versa I mean uh, when you worked on his album okay the first thing that he did was like hey can you sing on that track for me uh, Kama is the first one which was also the first one that I heard Ten years ago, can you sing on that? And I was like, of course. And then I recorded really fast and and sent it to him. And he sent me this email, so happy. He, <laughs> he said like, capital like yes, 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 all over. <laughs> After that, he was like, now do whatever you hear, play whatever you hear, put elements, make it as though like it's your track, you know like synth lines or whatever and then I, I, I did a bunch of stuff and he loved it and then he just started doing like that he would send me a track and he like do whatever you want sometimes he would ask specifically like hey can you play drums on this one listening to the music and the productions that I was doing he felt that I was able to contribute to his productions too because somehow I was connected you know I'll, I'll, I'll our ideas were connected. How was your mindset in that? Because all of a sudden you're dealing with 
somebody who you've been following for years all of a sudden this guy asked you for your opinion on how he should <laughs> uh, go about his music basically was there I a thing like where you had to flip a switch in your mind I felt like he gave me confidence you know he gave me the confidence that I needed to to do it you know I didn't have to like oh I'm not good enough because He was so nice. And then I started thinking like, well, it wasn't a trip, you know, to be all these years so obsessed with his music and because it actually, it's actually true for me. It was always like honest for me to love his music because it's what I am too, in a way. That was being shown not only in our music, but, you know, that, that was being shown all the time in all conversations that we have And just the magical fact that I was so, you know, into his music and craving getting to know him, you know, yeah. I would send him messages on Facebook, hey man, check this out that I do, and he would never answer, but I never took it as a, you know, personal thing, I just kept doing it anyway, because it's what I did. And it's hard to explain, it's just so, it was it always felt natural for us to, to collaborate, you know. Yeah. Can you t explain me the, the that little bridge on K7 Dreams? Right, That little bridge? Yeah. It goes kind of crazy with a lot of chords for a tiny moment because it goes back to... Do, de, do, de, do. Mm. You know what But I mean? What? It's no, a, what, it's what a guitar thing. It's a guitar thing. And maybe like oh. three bars. Oh, I know what you mean. It's like... A, it's when he gets to that part... <clears throat> And then the guitar plays yeah. something. You yeah. know what you mean? Yeah. I don't remember exactly what it is. Uh, I don't remember. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, it, the top I, notes, it, the top notes were almost correct. That was what, yeah. what you what you played. Yeah. I think it's the same principle. It's the same thing, like trying to... Uh, yeah, that's it. You know, it's the same yeah. thing. It's exactly the same thing. It's 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 going from F major to G major to A and to B and to C sharp, you know? Well, I'll tell you. F. G. Yeah. This is already A. Yeah. Uh, this is not A. <laughs> okay, I got lost. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. But it's, it's just fine. the same thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just the same thing. It always sounded to it's me just... like that. There's a deeper logic behind it. But it sounds like logic. it sounds super crazy, but still like a deeper like, logic behind behind Underneath. it. Underneath, yeah, yeah. I love that stuff. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, that's really cool. It's like it's just like a way of making things sounding more fresh with a little bit of. Yeah, but but I can totally yeah. relate to that. You know, giving getting a little tiny drop of knowledge from your teacher or mentor or even friend, yeah. peer or whatever, and that kind of sparks yeah. your imagination, and yeah. you totally take it somewhere else. You know. Yeah, totally. I totally. love that. Yeah, yeah it's a really a beautiful, beautiful concept. Song. <laughs> mm. oh, thank you, man. Thank you. Um, can mm. you tell me about um, how how your process of, of working together with Genevieve is in, in expensive uh, magnets? I love that. I love the, that EP. No, oh, thank you, man. Yeah, we have a new song coming out really soon. Oh, cool. Uh, the process is really natural, man. She, I admire her so much. Like, it's so nice, so fun to work together because she just she's just such a genius musician and every time that she comes with an idea it's just music and it's just like pure joy of music and we our our collaboration is really fluid and all all of our ideas are belong to us because we 
it's just what what what, what we we do you know we're partners in life you know she's yeah. my girlfriend so music is so much part of my life and her life too so when we're together like we i live in brazil she lives in la so we meet every month we try so we stay like together like for a week or two weeks together and this is a fun thing to do you know to go upstairs and record because we have so much fun we laugh a lot and yeah and is very much for the fun of doing it i love playing with her i love like sitting and playing beatles songs with her our songs it's just a so fun i just saw a video so of the, you guys uh, playing you're my everything together that also sounded yeah. beautiful i mean beautiful yeah. way also you how you come to behind her amazing yeah hmm. i love doing that with her she's the best singer ever man and to have like such a good singer like that to play to is heaven vocal is my probably my favorite instrument huh. ever and she's the best ever singer so When we play together, it's just like she makes me play so much better, you know. When I, when I play with her singing, if I'm playing, if I'm ch if I'm thinking about other kind of chords for that specific thing, she's with me and she doesn't, she doesn't care, you know. She just do it. So yeah. it's so solid that I can play whatever around. But it's not like she's parallel. She's together because it's aligned. So yeah, it's just fun. Very But funny. how is the process of writing music together? Because it seems that is it unsaid. Is that a song that you wrote together, or I wrote the song and she wrote the lyrics for I unsaid. See. That we we wrote that song a long time ago. We the, the when, right when we met and a song that we wrote together together was Yem. It's the first song. The yeah. Uh, yeah. And I had this thing, I had the chorus, this is me. And then she wrote the verse, which is so cool, it's so much cooler. And I wrote the, and I, and I wrote the, bri oh, the outro, the. I wrote that. I had these two, ver uh, these two melodies and I sent to her. And she, she wrote the verse. And then when we decided to record, The arrangement, everything we took, all decisions together. You know, she played me the song this from the Birds, the rock band, uh -huh. and we try to make it more, in, more or less, with that vibe. You know, which song is vibe. that? Uh, turn, 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 turn. I'll check it out. Yeah, yeah. You you see the the relation. I see. And yeah, like everything with her, she she is so awesome, and to find someone that you connect in that level to work on music because it's like so fluid and so fun and it's really cool we have a new song coming up it's more aggressive more right more rock vibe yeah. are you also it's working on a, on a on a new record yourself for your, your yes yeah yeah i think this one's gonna be gonna have more collaborations and more guests and stuff i don't know it's still in the in the early early stages Is there uh, like a daily routine, a practice thing that you always go through, or uh, are you more in yeah following different things for a period of time and then moving on to the next? Whatever I'm able to uh, do, because it's hard when you're touring to practice and write. Nowadays, I'm trying to practice more because I've been home for a, a month, which is like really cool What and is rare. What is the stuff that you're working on at the moment? I'm more right now. I'm more trying to write and record rather than any, anything else. But every once in a week or twice in a week, I try to sit down with the guitar and like play for hours to unlock uh, some some other stuff. But I, I don't. I'm, I, I haven't been practice practicing something specific apart from one thing that I'm trying to get better at which is finger style yeah I'm trying to be better at it how do you work on uh, that nah I try to do exercises regular exercises for finger style but more like trying to play what I play with a pick trying to play with a 
with like this. Yeah. Or like this. So it's so hard, and and I was never that good at it. So I'm trying to get better at it. Who are the guys that you admire on that topic? You know, finger finger style. Nelson Vera is a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people. Wes Montgomery. I love the way he plays with the thumb. thumb? Yeah. Yeah. It's the sounds so special. Paco de Lucia is a big influence. Oh. Not I, I don't I don't even like come close to anything that he does, but every time that I see him play I'm like, Wow man, this is something that I would love to be able to do. Yeah. And yeah. and I have a friend called Pipoquinha. Don't know if you heard of him. Yeah. He's a bass player gene. Yeah. He's a bass player. Mm -hmm. And he he's a master of everything. He plays like that, he plays like that without a pick. He plays like that. He plays all the ways, and he's just a genius. So I learn a lot watching him play. Sometimes I'm like, "Hey man, teach me that." And, but it, it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how? Yeah. What does Toninho Orta mean, mean to you? Oh man, everything. Toninho is one of my big loves, you know, in my life. He, man, his music changed. You can, you know, easily tell by the way I play, by the way I write songs, the way I sing. Everything, it's so... It comes from him a lot because, I don't know, he, he belongs to that realm of, of the things that we were talking earlier about Wayne and Milton and the, right. the, the mysterious uh, things. And he's a master of that. And... The way he plays, the voicings, the, the, the his songwriting, the way he sings, like intuitive singing and that thing that we were talking about, natural melodies. Yeah. He's the king of yeah, that. Yeah, and he's he, amazing. Yeah, and he picks if you're him he if you're in his presence, you he, he picks the guitar and he just like do his thing all the time, one after the other. And it's, and it's so natural, so there, it's like going It's like going to a waterfall and just watching it, you know. It's <laughs> like, it's there's nothing to overthink. It's just there, you know. So, yeah. And I was so fortunate to be able to play with him and live with him lately. Like, oh. just like the last few months, we got kind of closer, you know. Mm. So, I learned a lot from that meeting and from... We recorded some, recorded some songs together. And... The way he plays is so pretty because he has this jazz approach to Brazilian music, but, you know, in a way that nobody ever did, and in a way that sounds so fresh and so authentic that it's not trying to imitate any jazz guy, American or whatever. Yeah. He's just feeling the music, which is beautiful and doesn't belong to anyone. So, but did he tell you so, kind of where his harmonic? I mean, his his, his harmony goes goes a long way. Is, you know? is yeah, is the same as all these people in Brazil that I admire a lot and are heroes for me, like Hermeto, uh, Egberto, uh, Arismado, Espírito Santo, another great guy. Um, All these musicians that lived so much and they're so experienced and they played so much in, in the in the night of Brazil, like parties and yeah. clubs and nightclubs and brothels or whatever. They just learned so much in the bars and and touring and learning and radio and all of that. All the, 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 the Brazilian music has the these kind of chords, these kind of music qualities that you can find in all kinds of other classical music, jazz music. Brazil incorporated that, embodied that to his own popular music, which is so beautiful. And this is what I think I do, you know. Like, yeah. And it comes from that, you know, just watching people play, going around, being experienced, you know. So it's definitely a guy that is open to feel whatever it's around him, and you learn yeah. a lot when you like that, right? Yeah. yeah.